Hello, hello everybody, this is Eric Novice. In this video, I'm going to be doing an audiobook, audio letter on the open letter that was made to Shepherd's Church Gardena, um, El Community UBF. And before I, um, read this letter word to word, here's a interesting side note. This was actually the third open letter that was made to the church. This, this third letter that you see right now, excuse me. This was made back in 2016 when the second crisis, second exodus of that happened at the church where a lot of people left. So this is the third letter that was written. There was two, the first second letter was written during the first crisis, the first exodus back in 2010 and 11. Unfortunately, um, those letters have been lost. So there's no surviving copies. I did talk to those who've left way back at that time but fortunately they could not um, relocate the, the letters so they're unfortunately lost however this is the um third letter which um i was able to long story short um the guy who wrote this contacted another dude who is an on and off member who's went back to church um forward the email to me and thus how i have this copy and i made it public so now i'm gonna read this to you all so if you're new, per if you're new sheep, um, I highly um, recommend just to ask them about this and see if they can actually um, biblically um, disprove the content that's said in this letter. And knowing the members, particularly the seniors, the married people, they're either going to deny um, deny everything that's said, or they'll just avoid the subject altogether. However, they cannot. Um, deny that the letter even existed because this letter this is proof it existed So this letter was made back in September 12 2016 And hopes to open a discussion regarding the problems that are prevalent in church and this is even though this is letter was written back about f almost three years ago all the ways what has been said is still relevant to this day Hello fellow shepherds, I want to begin by saying that I have known many of you personally over many years and that I love and deeply respect many of you. Some of the best Christians and servants of God that I have ever known belong here at Shepherd's Church, Gardena. For all, you zeal, for, all, for all of your zeal, service, and dedication to God, many of you should be condemned. I mean commended, my apologies, commended. However, I no longer attend Shepherd's Church, Gardena. In fact, I have joined a large and growing group of ex shepherds who have left the church over the years. Unlike what you may you may might think, we did not run away because we were demon possessed or because we rejected God's will upon our life. Actually many of us love God very much and still continue to serve him faithfully. The reason the real reason that we left was because we suffered years of psychological and spiritual abuse from our shepherds and church leadership. We eventually had no choice but to leave. Since I've left the church I have I have had a large burden fall off my shoulders and I have been able to experience true freedom in Jesus Christ and my life has actually been more blessed. Apologies. I have written below an extensive list of compelling reasons why the system at Shepherd's Church Gardena and UBF as a whole is not biblically sound. If you do not want to receive any more emails from me, please let me know. Ultimately, I want to respect any decision that you come to make. If you want help, um, please contact me. Here it goes. I'll provide um, the author's contact in the description. Legalism and adherence to church traditions. It is true that Shepherd's Church Gardena has many traditions that it holds holds to very strongly. All churches have their own ways of doing things, but here, it, but here it goes into the extremes. If you're a member of this church, you're expected to be at, sun, at every Sunday worship service, no matter what. You must write weekly testimonies, attend conferences and other events, provide a financial offering, go fishing, teach multiple Bible studies, and anything else that the church decides you must do. There's nothing wrong with doing any of these things in and in for themselves. However, the church holds onto their man-made traditions as if they were God's word itself. Isn't this what Jesus was criticizing the Pharisees over? And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your own traditions? It is true that if you break any of the rules or tradition at Shepherd's Church that then in the eyes 
of the leadership if you have broken God's rules. How is this practice biblical? If Shepherd's Church Gardena truly claims that the Bible is their sole authority over everything, then why? Sorry. If Shepherd's Church Gardena truly claims that the Bible is their sole authority over everything, then why do they uphold these church traditions as if they were created by God Himself? In fact, upholding absolutely to these traditions church traditions and performing many religious activities does not make a person more spiritual. It only turns them into Pharisee, Pharisees or Pharisee-like people who feel the need to judge and rebuke someone anytime they fail to uphold these rules. As Christians, we are governed under grace and not by the works of the law. Jesus Christ set himself free from the burden of strict legal traditions. If we live under strict rules and regulations all the time, they were not free but rather, rather still cursed and therefore not saved. Hierarchies and extensive caste system. Here at Shepherd Church on Gardena, there is an extensive established ranking ranking system in which members are classified based on their spiritual condition. I'll put a link to the church hierarchy in the description below because I made a diagram to show you what it actually looks like. At the top is John Beck, who is like the king. Under him are all the fellowship leaders, elders, and senior shepherds below. That are the junior shepherds on the very bottom of all the sheep. The people who are higher up within this ranking system are considered to be more spiritual than those beneath them. Is this a biblical model? Did Jesus create a system like this? Did he treat his disciples differently because of their quote unquote spiritual rank? Absolutely not. The UBS system is almost identical to any military system. The leaders have identified, have identified ranks and they give orders that must be carried out. If a lower enlisted member were to challenge that authority, they would be severely disciplined. Let me ask you this. Could you disagree with a higher ranking member at the church? Not at all. Disagreeing with them is considered the same as disagreeing with God. If you're just a lowly sheep with no rank, you essentially have no value in the eyes, eyes of the leadership. How do you achieve rank at Shepherd Church Gardena? Loyalty to the group. Attending all required activities, teaching a lot of sheep, etc. In essence, this has turned into a system where numbers are very important and they have recorded in weekly logbooks at the end of the worship service. Or more specifically, end of the fellowship meeting, which comes right after the worship service. If you ever taught a Bible study, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Secret finances. Where do all the money go from the weekly offering? Have any of you ever seen a financial report? This is something that all churches provide automatically for any members or for the public to see. What would happen if you asked to see where the money goes at Shepherd's Church Gardena? You would be probably rebuked or told to just trust the leadership. This is not acceptable. Any legitimate church would not tell this to their members. Also, is Shepherd's Church Gardena registered with also is Shepherd's Church Gardena registered with the IRS as a nonprofit organization? This includes churches that collect money. They must be registered. They must be officially registered and approved. Is that the case with Shepherd Church, Rodina? Maybe or maybe not. Ask John Beck and see what he has to say. Make him sh show you the documents. If he is going to collect money from college students on limited incomes, then he should have something to show for it. Constant rebuking and spiritual bullying. It is commonly known that the practice of rebuking is very common and widespread at Sherbert, Gardena, and UBF as a whole. It seems that almost anything can be grounds for rebuke, including things that are not considered sins. For example, if you do not return your Sherbert's phone call, then that calls for rebuke. If you do not write a testimony or do not write a quote unquote deep enough testimony, then that is also grounds for rebuke. Is rebuking authorized in the Bible? Yes, it is, but only under certain conditions. Matters regarding very serious sins or the spreading of false doctrine or rebukes was intended for. It was not intended for small and, and insignificant matters that are of not significance to God. Here at Shepherd's Church Gardena is a culture, cultural custom to rebuke your sheep or someone else's sheep. They consider it as a way of keeping spiritual order. This is not actually what it does. The main reason for all the rebuking going on is to keep people in a constant state of fear so that they will not be singled out by the church leaders or criticized in secret meetings that few people at the church are even aware of. Yes, they, yes, there are secret meetings held by the leaders that the junior shepherds and the sheep probably don't know about, or if they know about the meetings, they don't know what's being talked about. Just a little side note there. 
Don't believe me? Well, I know very well that John Beck regularly has meetings with different groups of the church, where he singles out a certain individual for intense training or public humiliation. The whole goal of this is to get people to conform and not question anything going on in the church. Favoritism. Have you ever noticed that some sheep are treated better than others? It is true that if you're a sheep of a prominent shepherd or if or if the sheep is considered mainstream, aka white or class Caucasian, like John Booth, then you would receive special treatment and be given specific positions within the church, such as being the presider at Sunday worship service. Also, why is it that why is it that one very young disciple was recently allowed to go to the UBF um, Korean mission strip instead of the other shepherds who have been in the ministry far longer? The answer is simple. He is the sheep of John Beck. So so the sheep of John Beck, um, the author is referring to is um, Ivan. And he, of course, was moved to the front of the line. Also, how come John Beck's children do not have to abide by the same rules as everybody else? Two of them hardly ever come to worship service or testimony writing, testimony sharing. So, the, so John Beck's children. So, a side note for those who don't know, John Beck has three children. There's Sarah Beck, his oldest. There is um, Cornelia um, Corey Beck. That's his, I think, his middle child. That's his other daughter, and there's um, John W. Beck, that's his youngest and his only son. So yes, John Beck has three children. One of, th one of his daughters is even involved in... One of his daughters is even involved in another ministry outside of UBF. This is absolutely not fair. Why are all the members of the church placed under such strict rules when it comes to attending worship service when his own children are not? No. So, it's a... When it comes to second gen, it's a... Um, double standard in UBF, not just only in El Camino UBF alone. A horrible online reputation. It is no secret that UBF has a terrible online reputation. Just run a quick Google search and you'll find thousands of blogs from ex-members who were abused by the UBF system, as well as um, declassified documents, etc. In fact, the UBF church has been seen as a cult for well over 50 years by the mainstream Christian community, as well as cult watch groups. UBF was even expelled from the National Association of Evangelicals due to years of claim, claimed abuse by four members. But unfortunately, they got reinstated, I think, in 2008, I think. Do you really want to be associated with a church system that does this to other people? How would Jesus Christ view this? Loyalty to group equals loyalty to God. There is no joking here. It is true that at Shepherd's Church Cardinal, the more loyal that someone is to the ministry than they are considered more loyal to God. There are closed door meetings here at the church where John Beck will regularly criticize other members without their knowledge. They're referred to as being weak or not being one of us. I, um, side note, I was personally, personally, um, experienced this. What, what good does this do? All this does is put people into different groups, the spiritual versus the unspiritual, and serves as a way to bring down a person's reputation. How can a God-fearing church do these kind of things to their own members? How could John Beck himself make a determination on who is spiritual and who is not? The criteria that he uses is based on how committed someone is to carry out the goals and to do the ministry. He also rarely ever gets to know new sheep personally, but rather he relies on the information from their um, shepherd or the leaders to make a determination. It's also no s determination. Also, another side note, John Beck literally does not interact with any new sheep. In fact, that's extremely rare. The only time he interacts with, like, sheep is if it's his own sheep or unless they do something that he considers is sinful to his own children. Which is in, this, which I talked about in uh, my, um, my story. I'll link that in the description as well. If you want to check that out, the full story. Yeah, but yeah, that's the only time he ever interacts with, like, um, other members directly. It's also no secret that if someone disagrees with a church teaching or practice, they will automatically be labeled as rebellious and shunned by other members of the church. Excessive control over sheep's lives. The entire goal of Shepherd's Church, or Dean, is to control every aspect of its members' lives. This does not happen right away, but it all occurs little bits at a time. And also, this control is not physical control. It's not like you're being physically handcuffed to the building, but it's psychological control. After several years, many shepherds find this, find that they are slaves to the ministry must do anything that's asked of them. Why does the ministry do this? The reason that is that this is done is because they want to create as many house churches as possible. 
for house churches, meaning they want to create a lot of um, UBF marriage by faith. I'll link uh, in the link in the description. I'll, I'll put a playlist about UBF marriage by faith. In that playlist, I talk about what it is, how does it work, why should you be part of it, etc. The reason that this is done is because they want to create as many house churches as possible that can spread UBF ideology, theology across the United States and the rest of the world. This is why they want you to separate from your family and your past life. The ministry will always identify an area in your life that you must give up. They'll make it seem as if God himself is ordering you to do this when it's really the the shepherd or or um, people who are telling you this. UBF wants you to eliminate all areas of your life that will conflict with, you, with their ideals and goals. They will also do this with your marriage as well. Do you want to know the secret behind marriage by faith? John Beck and his leadership church leaders deliberately match people up who are completely opposite of each other. And I don't mean like he doesn't mean opposites attract either. This is not because the differences their diff their differing characteristics will balance each other out as they claim, but rather it's to prevent the couple from having any kind of real relationship with each other. If the couple has no connection with each other, then they are forced to focus more time on campus mission. Marriage by faith has never been about the happiness of the couple, but rather continuing the goals of the UBF ministry. In the UBF system, the more disciples that you quote unquote establish, then the more honor you're given in the ministry. That's why shepherds are so adamant about controlling their sheep with an iron fist. They're doing this to promote their own image in the church and to gain positive recognition from the body. If you are a shepherd and you think it is your job to control every aspect of your sheep's life, then read this Bible verse from Apostle Peter himself. Shepherd, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Exercise, exercise the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering over the those in your charge, but be an example to the flock. There you go. As shepherds, we have no right to excessively control and monitor the lives of another person. Submission to man over submission to God. Have you ever noticed that the teaching at the church highly promotes submission to God's servant no matter what? Yes, God does not use his, use his servants to carry out his will. See? Carry out. Apologies. Yes, God does use um servants to carry out His will, but that's not the only way in which He works. What about guidance from the Holy Spirit? How many people at Sheriff Church Gardena can truly claim that the Holy Spirit actually guided their life decisions and actions? Probably very few. In fact, as I note, um, the Holy Spirit's actually um extremely rarely ever mentioned at all, let alone take the credit for. On the works of God, the acts of God. In fact, almost everyone's career, college major, marriage, living areas, and just about everything else is under strict control of one sh shepherd. How is it that a shepherd can truly represent God? We all make mistakes and fall into sin. Even the disciples make mistakes, even after Jesus had long died. Ultimately, we must submit to God and to nothing else. Submission to man, an ideology, or a particular ministry, or a particular ministry should never override. Submission to man and an ideology or a particular ministry should never override God. We can meet God through studying his word, praying, and fellowship with other believers. After reading this, you may think that I'm trying to bring down the ministry here at Shepherd Church Gardena. That is not at all what I'm trying to do. Rather, I'm trying to raise awareness of these issues that have been going on here at the church and UBF for decades. My hope is that this could eventually lead to positive reform. I know many of you good people of God and I trust that you will do the right thing. We must hold our leaders accountable and demand positive change for the, the better. John Beck, I challenge you directly to be the forefront of this change. I have faith. The author had faith in you and know that you do love God and want to do as well. Please take control of these abuses and institute a truth based biblical value system here at the church. Reform your strict adherence to your traditions and end the practice of heavy sharpening. Do this for your salvation and for theirs. I appeal to you as a fellow servant of God and a brother in Christ. May God help you and God save on Shepherd's Church Gardena. Yeah, so after this, the aftermath of this letter, 
Instead of having an open discussion, John Brett gave order to all the leaders, um, those in the higher position to um, not only try to delete the letter, but um, excommunicate all members. All members who bring this up. See? So, yes. An open letter like this is considered a bizarre email. Yeah? Yes, this is the same. If you guys, yeah, this guy wrote that. 